Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to connect to a data source from the web. Imagine that you are trying to retire and you are looking for places to live and you have some criteria that you want to check to make sure that the places you want to live meets those criteria. For example, you might want a place that has a lot of sunshine, low crime rates, good healthcare, or perhaps you are a data analyst or a data scientist that is looking for information to help your customers. There's a website we can go to, it's called Best Places to Retire, and it basically ranks each of the states according to the places to retire. So the link displayed on the screen is the website we're going to go to. So this is where we are going to connect and interact with some data. So this is the website that I have just connected to, and this is a link in case you haven't got it. If I scroll down here, you see some information. You can see here it says ranking of best and worst states for retirement. So these are some useful information that you can connect to and interact with inside your Power BI desktop. I have just launched my Power BI desktop. When you launch the Power BI desktop, if you have this option checked that says show this screen on startup, you'll get this screen. So to connect to a data source, you can either click on this get data link or you can access the same link from within the Power BI desktop interface. So I'm going to X out of this startup screen and I'm going to click on this get data option. And within this get data, you've got the option for web because I want to interact with some web data. I'll click on that and I'll wait for it to launch. So it's giving me the option. So from the web, I need to paste in the URL of the website I want to interact with. So I pasted that in. I'm going to click on the OK button and see what happens. So it's trying to connect to that data. So what's happening here is that the query functionality of the Power BI desktop contacts the web resource and shows inside this navigator window what it has found. So you can see here it's found the document which relates to the site and it also contains a table. Now what we're interested in here is this table. I'm, so I'm just going to click to check it and you can see here it previews the data inside this table. So we've got three options here. One to load the data, one to edit the data, I want to cancel. Before you load data inside the Power BI desktop, you can decide to clean and transform the data with the Power Query Editor. And in order to access the Power Query Editor, you just click on this edit button. So I'm going, let's assume we want to adjust some of the data to make it meet our needs. Now the process of adjusting data that you are connected to is called shaping. So I'm going to click on this edit button here and that will bring up the Power Query Editor. So you can see here it's brought up the Power Query Editor and we can see the preview of the data. So now that we've got this, we can make some modifications that is shape the data before we actually load it inside the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to end this video here and in the next video, we will look at shaping the data that we've just connected to. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In the previous video, we were able to connect to a data source from the web using Microsoft Power BI Desktop. What I want to do in this video is to focus on cleaning that data, transforming it using the Power Query Editor. So any modifications you make with the original data source can be regarded as transforming the data or shaping the data. In the previous video, we connected to a data source from the web and we did not actually load the data. What we did was we clicked on the edit button in order to try and make some changes to that data. So when you click on the edit button, it gives you the Power Query Editor. So what we can see here is the Power Query Editor. The Power Query Editor inside the Power BI desktop makes use of the shortcut menu. So it has a lot of shortcut menus that it uses to interact with data. So the shortcut menu could include the right click. So if you right click, you can see, look at some menu here and you can also have some sub menus. So it gives you more menus and also context related menus. In addition to having these, it also has the ribbon area here. You can see this is the ribbon area. Most of what you can select on the transform tab on the ribbon, this is the transform tab here. So most of what you can select from that tab is also available by right clicking on an item. When you shape data in Power Query Editor, what you're doing is 
providing a step-by-step -step instructions to the Power Query editor so that it can carry out those instructions to adjust the data as it loads and presents that data. When you adjust data from a data source, the original data source is not affected. Only this particular view you can see on the screen of the data is adjusted or shipped. The steps that you specify to adjust the data, for example, if you want to rename a table, transform a data type or delete columns, any step you specify is recorded by the Power Query Editor. Once it does that, those steps are then carried out each time the query connects to that data source so that the data is always shipped the way you have specified. This process occurs whenever you use the query in the Power BI desktop or whenever anyone else uses your shared query, for example, inside the Power BI service. The steps specified are captured in a sequential manner under the applied steps in the Power Query settings pane. You can see here on the right, this is the query settings pane. So any steps that you have specified will be captured in this pane. When you connect to data using the Power BI desktop, before you bring that data inside the Power BI desktop, the data types in some of the columns may vary or you may have different or mixed data type. So as part of the transformation, you can manually change the data types. Let's assume that we have this column here that has mixed data type and we want to change the data type before we actually load that data into Power BI Desktop. So what you can do, you can manually right click here and inside that menu here, you can do change and where it says change type, you can specify whatever data type you want to convert it to. However, you don't necessarily have to do that because the Power Query editor is quite clever. The Power Query will detect if a column of text should be numbers or vice versa, and it will automatically change that data types when it brings that table into the Power Query Editor. So before, this is a Power Query Editor. So before that table was brought into the Power Query Editor, the Power Query would have automatically changed the data type. And anytime the Power Query Editor does something, it records it under the applied steps. So if we look at the query settings here, under the apply step, it just tells you the steps that have been taken so far. You can see here the first time we connected to the data source and then we, we displayed the information from that data source inside the navigation pane and Power Query has automatically changed the data type. You can see here it says change type. So these are the steps that the Power Query editor has performed so far. If you want to remove any of these steps, you just click on the X and that will remove the steps from the applied steps. I'm going to end this video here. In the next video, we are going to connect to another web data source that we want to use in building our report. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. In this video, we are going to continue from where we left off in the previous video. So what I want to do is connect to another data source. So the data we're looking at the moment here, it's okay. However, this column here that's got state, it's got the full names of the state. Sometimes when you're working with data, it's good to have the abbreviations for the states as well. So, and usually the abbreviation are usually two letter abbreviation. So we're going to connect to a public data source on the Wikipedia site and then interact with the data there, which gives the abbreviated two letter names for each of the state. So this is the Wikipedia site. And if you scroll down here, it tells you it's got a list of US state abbreviations. This is the data we want. So if you scroll down here, you can see the list. We've got the states and then we've got the abbreviation. So we are going to connect to this data source and interact with it. We're going to do some shaping of the data so that we can get it to work with the data we have. So to begin, let's copy the link from this site. I'm going to click and copy, and then we'll connect to the data source and bring that data into the Power Query Editor. So we've got the Power Query Editor here. So on that new source inside the ribbon area, just click on the drop down and select web. And we're going to go to here. I'm going to paste in that link from the Wikipedia site and click OK to connect to that data source. So you can see here it's connected to it and the navigator area shows us the type of data that it has brought back. So these are all the data from that site. The one we're interested in at the moment is this one that says codes and abbreviations for US states. So click on that checkbox and that previews what's inside that table. So once you've got that previewed, click on the OK button to bring this data into the Power Query Editor. So we have the data now brought in to the Power Query Editor. 
we will need to shape this data before we can work with it. So let's start shaping the data. First thing I want to do, I want to remove the top three rows. These rows are a result of the way the web pages table was created and we don't really need them. So to remove them inside the home tab here, there is an option that says remove rows. So click on this inside the ribbon area and just click on remove top rows. We want to remove the top three rows. So just type in three and click OK. We also don't need the bottom 26 rows. So we want to remove those as well. So we go through the same process. So on that, the remove rows, we click on the drop down, select remove bottom rows and just type in two six and click OK. And that will remove the bottom 26 rows. The next thing we want to do is filter out Washington DC. The retirement table does not include Washington DC. So we'll need to exclude it from our list. So to do that, select the drop down arrow besides the name and status region two, click on that drop down here. And inside there, make sure you clear the checkbox next to the federal district. So uncheck that federal district and click OK. The next thing we want to do is remove unwanted columns. The only columns we're interested in here basically is the column for the states and then the abbreviated name. So we want to be able to map each state to its official two letter abbreviation. And that information can be found in the second and fifth column. So this is the first column. That's the second. We want this second column and then we want the fifth. So this is third, fourth, fifth. So what we want to do, we want to select all the columns that we don't need and we remove them so that we are left with just two columns. So to select the columns we don't need, just click on the first one and then you can hold down the control key and then select the others you do not want to keep. So I'll select this one. I'm keeping this second column. I'm not keeping that. I'm keeping the fifth column. So I'm keeping column two and column five. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. So I'll click on, I'm clicking on the columns that I want to remove. So I'll select that, select that, select that as well. And I'll scroll, select this, select that. So make sure you've got all the columns selected that you want to remove. Once you've got that selected, click on the remove columns option, click on the drop down and select, click on remove columns and that will remove all the columns. You can see I've still got this one here. So I need to make sure that is removed. All right, so now I only have two columns and uh, we have the names of the states and then the corresponding two letter abbreviated names. The next thing we want to do, we want to use the first row as headers because we removed the top three rows. The current top row is the header we want. So to do that, why that is selected, we click on here. It says use first row as header, highlight that and click that. All right, so use first row as header is selected. If you look on the right hand side here on the applied steps, it is recording everything we've been doing from the time we connected to the source data to the navigation page. So every action we take is recorded in this applied steps. If you can't see this query settings show up, just go to the click on the view tab and select query settings and that will show the applied steps. The sequence of the applied steps is important in that it can affect how the data is shaped. So you can see the sequence of steps. So any steps that you're not happy with, you can always delete that step just by clicking on the X. All right. So if you remove a step from the applied step list, subsequent steps might not behave as originally intended because of the impact of the queries sequence of steps. So make sure that your steps are in the order that you want them. So let's continue with the shaping of our data. Next thing I want to do is rename the columns of the table and also the table itself. So let's rename the columns first. So I've got this highlighted. I'm going to right click and there is an option to rename. So I'm going to click rename and I'm going to call this state names. And I'm going to do the same for this column here. I have it selected, right click and I'll click on rename and I'm going to call this one state code. So I've now renamed my two columns. Also what I want to do, I want to rename the table, this table here called cause and abbreviation. I'm going to right click on it and rename it to say state code. So I'm just going to call it state code and make the first letter capital. All right. So now I've renamed my table and also renamed the two columns inside that table. I'm going to end this video here. In the next video, we're going to combine data. So we now have two tables, one called ranking of best and worst retirement places. And then we've got this state codes. We're going to combine the data from both tables.